Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. I am just praising the Lord for giving us what we need in these last days. The only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. And we have seen this in these lessons, eternal salvation, eternal redemption, and we are also studying eternal spirit. Hebrews 9, 14. This is amazing what God does and wants us to learn through his word. And he gives us 24 hours a day. How much of that time do we give back to him in prayer and the study of the Word of God. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God? If we could just think, of those nail prints that went into his hands. Let's think of them. And let's just think of the suffering that he went through because our sins were laid on him. Our sins were laid on him. So we see what the Spirit of God is. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father gave us his Son. Jesus Christ gave us his blood, and the Holy Spirit has given us eternal life, brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. And the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are equal. They have perfect unity. They cannot be separated. And when we are baptized into one body by the Spirit of God, we are to be one in Christ. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that unites us in to one body. And before Christ went back to heaven, after he arose from the dead, he was on the earth for 40 days. And the people that saw him knew that God had raised him from the dead, a miracle, a supernatural miracle. And when he ascended, before he ascended into heaven, he said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. This is what God is doing through these videos. And I am going to say this every week if I don't forget that you can copy every one of these videos and have part in doing what he says. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we must pray for one another. This body of believers, we must pray because that's his desire that we will be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And this is a prayer that each of you can pray for all of our children, our armed forces, our policemen, our firemen. And this body of believers, we are to pray for one another, laboring fervently in prayer 
that we will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. This is how we are to live in these last days. Because the thing that I'm going to teach you in these lessons is about the physical death, a consequence of sin. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We see this, a physical death is a consequence of sin in Genesis 3, 19. Physical death affects only the body. All physical death ends in the resurrection of the body. All physical death. The soul and spirit live independently of the death of the body. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 and you should know that there is no pain in death as a child of God and no one can commit suicide. I want this given out to every person in the world because your soul never dies. And you do not have a spirit until you are born again by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God has to quicken you, bring you out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. And he takes the blood of Jesus Christ and the spiritual faculties of the Spirit and this is something that you need to write down and you need to give it to every person. The spirit receives impressions of outward and material things through the soul and the body. Now your soul, the gates of the soul, are imagination, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections. And nothing can hurt your body because our body goes back to dust from where it came. Your soul, if you, when you take your last breath, your soul goes to a place of torment. So you can't commit suicide. And you have memory. Memory, reasons, and affections. You will remember what happened to you on this earth. But the Spirit of God, the spiritual faculties, are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. You have none of them until you are baptized into the body of believers through the Holy Spirit and blood. Now this is something that has to be received by faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So as you understand what's happening with your body, it tells us in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8, And we are confident, I say, and willing, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord if you are born again. That's the only way that you can get to heaven is through the Spirit of God. And then when you take your last breath, your spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. There is no fear in death for a believer because Christ died instead of us, and we will never die. We will never die. You have seen me give this out more than any other thing. Now, in 1 first, in Corinthians 15, you have to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and you see he says in verse 40, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, 
but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Verse 42, now this is 1 Corinthians 15, 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised incorruptible. Remember, you cannot go to heaven any other way if there's sin in your body. Your body goes back to dust, and then it's going to be raised at the rapture. Now, I won't get into all of that today, but this is something you must learn so you will never fear, because fear comes from Satan. And God's Word says, I've given you my peace. That's another inheritance that we have. So we see it is sown in a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body for those that have never received Christ. And there is a spiritual body. And now listen at this because you need to know this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 38, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. It's like a seed planted in the ground. But those without Christ are going to be in the grave until after the thousand-year reign with Christ. That body is going to be there. Then your body is going to be raised, and your soul that has been in a place of torment, they're going to be raised together and meet the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. You see why these lessons are so important? Because there are too many gods today and too much of the world and not the true word. This is why you must understand, now listen at verse 50 of 1 Corinthians 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot go to heaven apart from the Spirit of God, and the soul that, that sinneth, it shall die, the soul then the blood makes an atonement for our souls. And this is, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. So we have to understand that Christ has this in this book for us. Now, this is his word. But God giveth us a body that's like a seed planted in the ground then you must see this. There are two resurrections. And this is when we meet the Lord in the clouds at the rapture. And the other one is when we, those that die without Christ, will be raised after the thousand-year reign with Christ. The seven-year tribulation period is going to come. We're in the book of Revelation, that's a seven-year. That's when the Antichrist is going to be reigning. And this is the day to accept this gift of eternal life. The first resurrection is unto life, and the second resurre resurrection is going to be unto death. That is, after the thousand-year reign with Christ. And this is amazing. At Romans 3.23 accounts to us a perfect righteousness because sin cannot enter heaven. And then the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is the final name of the one true God, Elohim. Perfect unity and perfect equality. This is what is needed today for the world to have perfect peace. And I want every person that's a true child of God to pray this prayer with me. Colossians 1, 
verse 9. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice that it's thy desire that we will be filled with the knowledge of thy will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We want to walk worthy of thee unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of thee. Strengthened with all might according to thy glorious power under all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto thee, who hath made us meet to be the partakers of the saints of light, our inheritance as a saints of light, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin that's brought us out of darkness into the kingdom of thy dear Son. This is our prayer for every true believer today, and that each one of us will right now say, we're going to give this word out to the whole world as a body of believers in perfect unity. And we are rejoicing that thou hast given us this unity and this word, and we want to all obey it, and we're asking for 100 fold of every person that hears. Because it's not thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we come to the throne of grace today with this prayer, to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. And we thank thee that thy grace is sufficient for every need. And we're coming into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now we pray that each one of you that have received this gift today, because here we have the Spirit of God dwelling in our bodies. Greater is he that is in you Greater is he that is in you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We do not have to obey Satan. He has no power over a true believer if we obey this book and claim his promises. This is a true, true word of God, pure as silver. We must understand this, and as we do, our nation will be brought back to God through our revival. This is what is needed. So we see in these lessons now, once again, the eternal spirit. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, he never sinned. The Holy Spirit contributed, contributed the blood of Jesus Christ. And we know that uh, one of the things that I must give to you today, and I, I, I will give it to you again and again, how was Jesus born? All of this is a heavenly divine message. All of this is the only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. So Mary was a virgin, you have to believe that, and Joseph was a virgin. He did not know her until after Christ was born, and God's Word never changes. This is how the world is grieving the heart of God today. Now, the Holy Spirit came into Mary's womb, the Holy Spirit, with His divine blood, and conceived Christ. The man is the one that gives the blood to the woman at conception. That is a divine conception. The Holy Spirit comes into our soul and plants that blood. And those of uh, people that every person in the world is in darkness. But God in his marvelous grace in Ephesians chapter 2, he teaches us this truth. And then, I have to also give you the message that we're brought out of darkness. You 
hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and hath raised us up to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And he says also in Ephesians, according as he hath chosen us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And verse 3 of Ephesians 1, we are blessed, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now this is another inheritance that you must see today, and I thank God that all of these are what we need in our lives. And we will praise Him continually. We're to offer the sacrifice of praise to Him continually, the fruit of our lips giving thanks unto Him for every believer. And in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, for all that He's we have inherited in Him. Acts 26, verse 18. Now listen at this, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin. This is our inheritance and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Inheritance. This is what we have. We are children of light. We are not children of darkness. God's Word teaches us these truths, and we are to walk in the light and have fellowship one with another. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. This is what we are commanded to do. So, in John 4, 23... John 4, 23. Now, I will repeat a lot of these because they are important. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers, we are to worship him because he's deity. Man is never to be worshiped. True worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now, we see how many times worship is in verse 23 and verse 24. That's a little lesson I can give you today. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So here we have real worship can only come through the spirit of God and the word of God. You don't know, you know nothing about worship except your worship in spirit and in truth. This is what is needed today. And then we see in Ephesians 4, once again, we go back to Ephesians, which is, I said, has the highest and holiest, highest revelation that God has given to man. Revelation chapter 4. This is verse 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, for by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. This is what we see today, and we must get back to this truth and tell it to every person in the world today. And then, in Ephesians 1, verse 22, Christ exalted to be the head of his body, the church, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and in all. Then we see once again in 1 John 3, 24. 1 John 3, 24. And I want you to write these down 
and make a note of everything that I'm giving, and I will go over them again with you. 3, 24. Let's read verse 3 here. I mean, chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. The world is our enemy. You have to understand that. And, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not, look, not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we, he shall appear, we shall see him as he is, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And verse 22, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And verse 24, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And that hereby know we that the Spirit, he abideth in us by the Spirit which God hath given us. And then First John four thirteen. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the whole world. The hope of this world is the only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. And then I will try to get this in, and if not, I'll read it to you again. This is 1 Peter chapter 1. Verse 22. Now, this is what's happened to you and me. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. See, we can't read this book and understand it apart from the Spirit. Unto unfeigned love of the brethren. We're to love him. We're to love the brethren as God has loved us. By this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. This is of eternity. This is eternal. Verse 25, But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Oh, we just begun to understand the inheritance that God has given to us. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you.